All right, um, here I am doing my very first video for all of you. Some of you have asked me to demonstrate my flowers in alcohol inks, and I'm very willing to do that. I think it's a great idea for all of us to share ideas and uh, learn from each other. So here I'm going to start. The first thing I'm going to do is let you see all of the different equipment that I will be using for this workshop. <coughs> The other thing is you're not going to see me simply because um, you want to get really close to the uh, surface that I'm using. Uh, my surface is about 13 inches by 10 inches and this is Yepo paper. So I love the Yepo paper. It's very smooth and when you don't like what you've done you can actually wipe it off. So let's get started on this project. Um, the first thing that I would like to mention to you is that um, I like to take some of the alcohol inks and I like to um, put them into these little bottles and I dilute it with 99% alcohol so that I get some lighter colors going on. The alcohol inks are very intense just by themselves so it's a really good idea to mix a whole bunch of um, diluted alcohol inks to give you lighter colors and, and it helps quite a bit with the process. Some of the um, alcohol inks I'm using today for you is the Copic Alcohol Inks. Copic actually has markers, but you can buy the inks to refill your markers. And I like to use these um, because they're alcohol-based and they've, uh, they're beautiful colors. So that's one of the brands I use. The other one I'll be using today is the Pinata colors. And um, they look like this, Pinata. I know that's a little bit out of focus, but um, so some, I'm using some pinata colors, some all of the sort of the pink lines of colors, and I also have some Adirondack colors here, also that I'm using. One of the most important little p mediums that I do use is the pinata Claro extender. Um, once I put some of my um, colors down and I want them to spread a little bit or extend them. This is really, really important. And by the way, I'm going to list all of these in my comments once you'll, you'll see them in the comments line, all of the different materials I'm using. The other item that I love to use is pure alcohol and I put pure alcohol in a Holbein spritzer. I like the Holbein spritzers because they spritz unevenly. They don't have this consistent misty spray. They, they spritz really crazy so you get those varieties of little bumps and textures that you need in the work. So there's the Holbein um, spritzer container with just 99% alcohol inks in it. The other item I like to have are brushes, a couple of brushes, just small ones, and some um, cotton swabs. Cotton swabs are very important. And I also have alcohol in this little container. This little container has sort of a needle on it and it squeezes. That way I can actually squeeze some of the um, alcohol right onto a swab and I can do some blending with that. So these are some of the materials I have. The other material um, tool that I use, actually it's not really a material, it's a tool, is um, dust blaster or air duster, canned air that you can buy just about anywhere where you can buy any kind of electronics. They carry this for your computers so you can dust off things. And um, a lot of people like to blow with a straw but I, I get too dizzy so I like to use these. And um, <clears throat> that's basically about all I need. The other one item also that I do use is the Copic alcohol markers. They give me some fine lines if I want some fine lines and fine work, so I have those also. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put down some grays. And I'm using uh, three different grays. I've got a warm gray, a semi-warm gray, and a cool gray. And these are mixed, um, diluted grays that I mixed. It's a good idea to mix your own. You just need a few drops of your alcohol inks into your, um, into your alcohol. Um, test them to see how you like the tonal value once you've mixed it. You can always adjust it, add a little more alcohol if it's too dark or add a little bit more um, of the pigment if it's too light. So I'm ready with this and here we go. 
I have my spray can in one hand and I have my gray in the other and uh, I'm going to start doing this. So I start with a little drop and then I spray it like that. This is a little bit brown, it's pretty. And one of the things that I think is really important is drawing skills can be a huge asset here because you have to visualize the shapes that you're trying to make. If I'm doing a flower, you have to visualize petals and all of that kind of thing. And this is just sort of just giving me a background to this flower. <clears throat> you can see the nice warm gray and the cooler grays happening here. And then this is even a cooler gray. Show it to you. And I'm going to spritz it. So that's sort of the base of my flower. I like to have a little bit of the grays in the background. Actually, some of the trending colors uh, today are the um, the pinks and the grays together. It seems to be uh, quite the thing that people like to hang up in their houses. Now what I'm going to be doing to this is I'm going to be um, putting down some of my diluted pinks. And I have two here. It's sort of a, a pinky color. And then I have a sort of more of a radish one, so I'm going to put those down. Again, always thinking in terms of petals. This is a very, very light one. It's very pretty. And it gives you sort of the background that you might be looking for. <clears throat> one thing I really love about these is they do react to each other. In, and so whatever I put down before will re um, activate and create some of these beautiful little... Um, lines that you're seeing in here and I, I love that and they're so transparent like you all know because many of you have been using some of these alcohol inks and the transparency is very very pretty so here's my my uh, pinks don't use very much and I like to blow it right away and you can actually learn to manipulate the, the way that that's going to flow with the with the blower with the canned air. This is a darker red. I'm going to do that now. So I'll put a little bit right here and I'll blow it. You can see that it's a little more intense. And then I'll do just a little tiny drop here. You want to vary your petals so that they don't all look exactly the same. You get that kind of an effect happening. I'm going to detach this one here. I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to blow it this way a little bit. I want to manipulate its direction somewhat. And this one too, just a bit like that. I think this is turning out okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So those are all the colors I've used that were diluted. Now I'm going to go into the pure colors and I'm going to start with the Pinata um, Magenta. See how that looks. Tiny little drop and you'll definitely see the di difference in the intensities of the color. And maybe I'll do just one more of that here. I have, I, I'm always really very careful how much of this you put down. The tiniest drop can can spread like crazy. So just gonna watch that. Um, that color is pretty. So I haven't used that color before, so it's really great. And then I'm going to use this one, which is the Copic. Um, the next one is going to be a Copic Red. Very pretty color. Very blood red, actually. And away we go with this. Do three of that one. Uh, travel the distance. It's good. And I'm going to also use this really, really dark one. I just love this one. It's very pretty. It's also Copic. I will list these on, you will actually find these all listed on this video. You can see something that's happened here which I really like. It's right there. It's turned very, very light and, and that's very pretty. Now, after I've kind of gotten the shape here that I want with those colors, I'm going to use something that's very important to me. It's the Pinata Caro Extender. And it, what it does is it, it helps to blend your colors. So I'm going to be really careful here. I want some of these areas right here. As you can see, this area here is really hard lined. And I want to blend some of these areas out. You'll see one here. You're going to see one there, one there. And I'm going to see if I can blend those out a little bit. 
So I'm just going to add a drop of it in here, like that, and you will see what's going to happen, see what it does. I'm going to blow it back onto the ink, and I'm manipulating that to extend out so you get these beautiful little things happening here. It just, it really just extends, it does exactly what it says, it's an extender, it extends the colors. Put one right there. It's very powerful, so it takes a little bit of practice to manipulate the use of this medium, but it's extremely effective. And I think that's something that you're seeing in the works that I'm doing. <coughs> Again, takes I've, I've done at least, I don't know, 20 or 30 of these before I really got the hang of what I was trying to do. So, it, you know, I do have some intent, and sometimes our intentions don't work out, but eventually, with practice and perseverance, your intentions can actually become successful. So... Now my air is kind of blowing out because it gets really cold, and once that can gets really cold, I switch to another can that's warm. And that helps a lot too. If you have two, I usually have two or three cans of air going at the same time because I just like it. I like using that. The other thing I want to show you is um, how you can actually do some blending with with toothpicks. I'm uh, not toothpicks. Um, cotton swabs and I'm using my just pure alcohol and I'm just gonna put a little bit of that alcohol right on there if you can see that and I'm going to actually I think you could really be able to see this I'm gonna actually just show you how you can actually blend out some of your areas with the cotton swab to create some nice little um, unseen edges in that it softens them up a little bit. And you can do that just about anywhere on your flowers where you want to change something. If you want to change something like this little area right in here where you've got this little hard edge doesn't look too visual pleasing, you can manipulate them. You can also create details by just running it along like that. You'll see it'll sort of appear in there. Uh, I dropped some of the alcohol in here and again, if you don't like those great big round spots, you can actually, with your um, cotton swab, you can blend them out a little bit like that. <clears throat> so, you can manipulate it to some extent. Um, I like this dark one right in here. It's kind of pretty. I like what, where this is going, so I'm going to leave this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a Copic marker. Um, this, it, these Copic markers come with one side um, with a wedge and the other side is a point and you can decide which ones you want. This is a very dark dark one. It's called blue-green and I'm going to use the wedge side to create this stem. And so I'm just going to paint this on with this marker creating my little area where the flower is going to come out of and then my stem comes down and just follow it through like that. I'm going to put some of this in here. It's amazing how these colors all work together. You could hardly ever get mud. And then I'm going to use the Copic black marker. Put some black in here. Get some nice contrasts going on. I like the black. Get these nice little areas. You can create some nice um, textures with this. And then I'm going to actually use a green. It's an Adirondack green. I'm going to just stick a little bit of the green in here. This is pure right out of the out of the um, container. This one is not, this green has not been uh, diluted. Um, with that I can take my uh, <clears throat> take the cotton swab again and you can move this around. And I do have some black here. It's right here. Uh, just a minute. Let's see. Where did I put that black? I guess I didn't pull the black out. I'm, I'll just use the black marker or the dark brown marker actually I should say. 
I really should have some black on here. Let's see if I can find some. <clears throat> I thought I pulled out a black. I'll just leave it. It's not a big deal. Um, so anyway, this is how far I've gotten with this. The last little item on this is where I take my spritzer. I use, I like the Holbein spritzers, as I said before. And there's just pure 99% alcohol or isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. I buy that at a pharmacy um, in the city. They, you have to ask for it. Ours in Canada is behind the counter so you have to ask for it. You have to be really careful with this. You don't want to spritz everywhere because like they say a little makes a much nicer suggestion than a lot. So I'm just going to spritz it. Here I am and I'm going to spritz on this side up quite high so you don't see me but you'll see what's going to happen the minute I do one very uh, quick spritz. There you go. Now you can see that forming there I think. Do that thing. I probably only need the one. Um, if if it starts to um, dilute your colors that you've put down too much, just take your your air gun, your your canned air, and spray it. Um, spray some canned air on it, so then it, it actually stops the process pretty quick. I'm going to do one more spritz over on this side right here. Let's see right. There, I'm going to do it. So here we go. Let's see if I can get this close for you to see. Isn't that here? There we go. That was just a tiny little bit, and you can—I don't know if you can see that. And I hope that it's in focus for you. There it is. It's doing its thing. And basically, that's it. I hope that you have enjoyed this. And again, um, I hope you'll learn from it. Uh, have a great day, and maybe I will do this again if you really like what I have presented to you. Bye for now.